uh, to grow in an engineering field, to move from a junior to a senior, mm. it takes quite long. Uh, if you hear a lot of people, it takes yeah, it takes longer uh, because it's more like somebody who is a senior there has to leave or uh, God forbid, you know, something else happens, you know, to that person. <laughs> then, <laughs> then you become a senior. It's more like that in certain companies, you know, and certain companies, they, they still have, they're still very much working backwards. They still have, oh, this is how you must grow. So I like incorporate, incorporate, uh, you know, you get rewarded, you know, you can mm. become a senior in two years, you know. Um, in engineering, that doesn't happen a lot. Okay, so when when I graduate, when when I was in my third year, second year, I always knew that I don't want to become an engineer. Um, I actually knew when I was doing my second year, um, and then. I had an opportunity to switch. So the nice thing about engineering, I had an opportunity to switch to industrial engineering, which is more versatile uh, than metallurgy. So meaning the opportunities are more broader, you know, for for industrial engineer. But I decided not to. Um, why? Because I I realized that as an engineer, you can work anywhere. That's why you must not be stressed. So I would say for those who uh, are worried that engineering jobs are becoming narrower. What they should rather do is start study different industries and say, okay, fine. If if I'm an engineer, I'm working in a bank. What exactly will I be doing? Mm. Or if I'm working for Deloitte, for example, as a consultant, what kind of problems would I be solving? So in that way, you're able to understand uh, what uh, problems interest you to solve. You know, am I interested in solving? agricultural problems, mining problems. Am I interested in solving credit issues, for example? So in the sense that if you're working in a bank, uh, you're looking at a credit profile of a person, you say, how can we manage risk? Uh, or how can we predict that this person is going to, you know, all those type of things. Because you can still do those things, uh, even if you didn't study data scientist. Companies do that. They, they will employ you as an engineer, and then they will train you to analyze data so you'll basically be working just like an engineer, uh, I'm sorry, just like a data scientist, but instead you're being trained there. So meaning you hit the ground running anyway. I see. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's quite interesting yeah. that you, you say that you are not, uh, I mean, in, in second year already, you knew that you are not wanting to be an engineer because yeah. um, on, on your LinkedIn profile, it says that you are passionate about management, consulting, banking, yes investment banking big data and data science i didn't see engineering there it's so like how oh, can't he yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it isn't very there <laughs> I <didn't> exactly see. <laughs> yeah man uh, and don't get me wrong man engineering actually has money especially uh like especially mining engineers the figures i gave you about data science entry level mining engineers make more than that Sure. You know, depending on a company as well, but uh, mining, you can make good money in engineering. Like it's not all bad, you know, it's just that, oh, one of the reasons why I didn't like engineering, <clears throat> I knew this, uh, to grow in an engineering field, to move from a junior to a senior, mm. it takes quite long. Uh, if you hear a lot of people, it takes, yeah, it takes longer. Uh, because it's more like somebody who is a senior there has to leave or uh, God forbid, you know, something else happens, you know, to that person. <laughs> then, then you become a senior. It's more like that in certain companies, you know, and certain companies, they, they still have, they're still very much working backwards. They still have, oh, this is how you must grow. So I like incorporate, incorporate, uh, you know, you get rewarded, you know, you can mm. become a senior in two years, you know, um, in engineering that doesn't happen a lot. Yeah. 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 In fact, I don't know if that happens, but yeah. 
So, so, so now, you know, in which areas, let's say the, the, here is someone, they have done engineering, yeah. but just like you, they don't want to go into the traditional engineering um, jobs. Uh, where can they go? I, I know consulting. I know I've seen some guys going to consulting, some guys going into analysis, quantitative analyst, business analyst, investment analyst, and stuff like that. Which which kind of disciplines or fields can they go into uh, which are not traditional engineering, you know, jobs? Yeah. Yeah. Um, ooh, that's, that's broad. Um, yeah, first of all, they can work as management consultant. So if you're working as a management consultant, even better. So what a management consultant does is solve problems in different industries. So I'll give you an example. Let's say you work for McKinsey, sure. you know, uh, McKinsey Consulting. You will be, uh, let's say, consulting, let's say with ESCOM, for example. ESCOM can say, we're not making profits. We are always bleeding. We don't understand why our numbers are not matching. As a consultant, what you'll be, I'll just give you like a high level view. What you'll do is look at the costs, for example. What are your costs um, as ESCOM? What is it that is costing you? And what are your revenue streams? So how are you making money? Uh, so from that, obviously, from a math math mathematics point of view, you do your own subtraction. I'm making this much. This is how much it's costing me mm. to make this money. Mm. When you do the difference, you want to check, are you making profit? Is your value negative or positive if you're making profit by how much you know so what's your profit margin what's the percentage if you're making profit uh you made profit of this much this year and you make profit of that much next year um are you growing as a company stuff like that you know uh and in management consulting the good thing about it is tomorrow you'll be consulting with mtn the next day you're consulting with uh transnet the next day you're consulting with a university. Wow. You literally the scope is huge. You can literally solve any type of problem. You, you understand. That's what management consulting is all about. You're given a problem, it doesn't matter what type of problem it is. You have certain specialists. If it needs too much mathematics, like for example, now we start talking about income statements, there will be accountants there that you'll be working with as a consultant, but at the same time the problem statement will remain you know if the problem statement is to let's say all of a sudden they are trying to let's say transnet for example they are starting to have a lot of uh a lot of a lot of accidents at job at work mm. you know and they can't figure out what it is you know people are just there's always you just hear an accident happen someone broke their leg what 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 they can always hire a consultant to come and investigate. Uh, and one of the reasons why companies do that is because sometimes it can be a lot of work. They don't have time to do that, but they have the money to pay someone else to do it. So you come as a consultant, you investigate. And then maybe when you investigate, you find out, oh, maybe it's because most people are hungover, you know, uh, just giving you an example, <laughs> you know. Uh, so you realize, oh, most accidents happened on Monday and they were actually most people are hungover. Then now uh, the company has to now say, okay, how can we manage this risk? Then now what happens is the company then will say, okay, we're starting to make people blow every time they come to it. Sure. Now you blow on Mondays, you blow, then that's how we can manage that risk and prevent those accidents. Just to give you an example. Yeah, but um, <clears throat> other things uh, could be, yeah, like we said, you can work in banking. Um, so in banking, you'll be working as an analyst. So as an analyst, a credit analyst, uh, so back in the day before data science became a thing, you would be working as a credit analyst. So as a credit analyst, what you do is you're analyzing the data. And part of it is you do build models as well. So if a company is, uh, okay, banks don't do that, but there's a uh, programming language that most uh, statisticians and actual scientists use, it's called SAS. SAS programming language. Mm -hmm. uh, excuse me. You would be taught that, you know. So you would be taught SAS, and then from there, then you have to build uh, mathematical models, logistic regression, linear regression, those models. 
uh, whether you're predicting somebody, the probability of someone defaulting, or you're predicting the probability of someone activating, like meaning paying the account, for example. Uh, yeah, like it could be many things, but like you're just building models, but you're also analyzing the data. So that that's what would happen if you're working in banking. You'll analyze the data. You also build models, which is very exciting, by the way. Um, it's very exciting. Same with consulting. Very exciting. But I have to warn, though, uh, with management consulting, like I said, I didn't mention this. The workload can be extremely huge. Um, yeah, some management consultants, especially if you're working for the big the big three, McKenzie, Bain and Company, uh, BCG. Uh, I haven't worked with those, but I have all this knowledge because I wanted to work there. And also because I know people that are working there. Uh, you might not have a life, but you will make very good money. Very good money. Yeah. So you're, making, so you're making good money, but you don't have life. When do you spend the money now? Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately... Uh, Oh, you, the exciting part as well is that there's a lot of traveling opportunities uh, for consulting. So you could be working in Kenya. Next time you can be working in Russia. Next time you'll be working in America, Europe. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, for those big three that I mentioned in particular, 